My name's Allie, and I'm gonna tell you about Headlights! One day, my sort of little sister, who would prefer to remain anonymous, was being picked up after school by her dad. When he asked her how her day was, she said, ah. When he asked her how she was, she said, I got bugs in my head, that's what. He knew they were headlights because their school had sent a paper around saying, Watch out for headlights on your kids' heads. My other sister and I didn't know anything about headlights, and we were totally grossed out. Even my mum was grossed out. My sort of little sister was a bit ashamed by our reaction. She didn't know the bugs in her hair were gross. We needed to know more about these strange creatures. So we called the regional health office. The nurse said not to freak out. She also gave us lots of information about headlights. The life of a headlight is pretty simple. Headlights start out as little eggs stuck to your hair. These little eggs are in cases called nits. They are very, very small. They are so small that when somebody calls you a nitwit, they are being really insulting. And they are so small that when somebody says that so-and-so is nitpicking, it means that the person is looking for the teensiest, weensiest little things. After a week or so, when it's time for the baby lice to come out, they do a funny thing. Their little eggshells are so tight that they can't squeeze out. So, they gulp air like crazy and fart into the back of their eggshells. The air pressure builds up and pop, out they come. After that, they go down the hair to the scalp where they stick their little sucking mouths in for a drink of <laughs> At this point, they're about the size of a period on a page. They drink and drink and drink and drink and drink until they grow up. Their drinking and pooping makes you itchy. Their scurrying around makes you itchy. And their making little nits in your hair makes you itchy too. At least it makes me itchy, and I don't even have head lice. People get head lice mainly by head-to-head -head contact. That means that when your head touches somebody else's head, they scurry across. Sometimes they may travel on hats, scarves, or on pillows. But this way of traveling is pretty hard on them. They're not very tough, and they die in about three hours if they're away from the human head. The nits are different. They can take more or less than 10 days to hatch. I like to think of them as little time bombs. Here's how to look for head lice and nits. So the places that, we're, that we'd really like to check, they call it the, the halo pattern. It's at the nape of the neck that they, at the very best place to look because it's warm and sheltered. If there is a knit, it will be attached to the hair shaft within a quarter an inch of the scalp, very close. The public health nurse also gave us a list of things to do to get rid of head lice. The first thing to do was to go to the drugstore and get one of the many treatment shampoos or rinses made for nuking them. The second thing we needed to buy was a fine tooth comb specially made for combing knits out of hair. After the drugstore, we went home and washed everybody's hair with the stuff. Here's a drowning louse. Then, my kind of sister's dad combed her hair with a fine-toothed comb for a long time until all the nits were gone, at least most of them. Then we washed everybody's sheets and pillow covers. And that was it, except we have to do our hair treatment again in a week. So like, don't have a hairy about it, okay? <laughs>